Good morning, Greenlight the Day family. Welcome back. My name is Jane and Sally is greenlighting the day with me this morning. Good morning, Sally. Yes, I am. Good morning, Jane. She, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you just want to read Greenlight with a friend. And I think, you know, just talking to a friend, I think is a, you know, it can be just a, so a great way to start the day. Sometimes these four o'clock conversations, man, can really change <laughs> a day for it. <laughs> Sally, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let you hear what I picked to green light today, and, and you can tell me what you think about it, because I know what I think about it okay. when I read it. Um, you and I are both familiar with, uh, as weight loss surgery patients, we have heard, if not known in person, Katie J, which uh, we met her in, uh, in Las Vegas uh, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. You remember that? So yes. this is uh, something that she wrote in her blog uh, for her NAWLS group of people that she she works with mm-hmm. and uh it's talking about uh butterflies he talks about butterflies so this is what she wrote let me pull it up it's called an extreme measure you can take for bariatric surgery success but i feel like this is nothing well I can see why people would think of it as weight loss surgery, but I would just really think about it as um, not weight loss, but it just as change in life. And so many of us are going through change and transformation. And transformation does not have to be about weight or size. It's just about changing, oh, no. allowing change to happen in your life and being okay to be to transform into whatever you're going to transform. So that's really the I can point. imagine it has to do with the, the seasonal nature of life and that we go through seasons and then we can go flow with the seasons. We're in a better place than if we try to resist the seasons. So right, go right. for it, girl. If caterpillars had a conscience and knew what they were in for on their long journey to becoming a butterfly, I bet some would be fearful. Mm-hmm. In fact, some would be so afraid they deny they even wanted to be a butterfly. But others would want to be a butterfly so badly they'd ignore the reality of how butterflies are truly made and try gimmicks to become one right away. They would buy wings and try to stick them on or use a wing making device to stretch their skin into flaps and then paint the flaps pretty colors. A lot of insects would probably say the wing making device was an extreme measure, but it's not. It's just a distraction. The extreme measure the caterpillar must take in order to become a true butterfly is to undergo a total transformation, not a pretend one. The extreme measure is for the caterpillar to show up, do what she's supposed to do, and then allow the transformation to happen. Allow it. A friend pointed out to me recently that a caterpillar will build her own shroud, the cocoon, crawl in, and turn into a gelatinous mush. Then miraculously, certain cells in that mush, called imaginal cells, will diversify. Over time, they form into a butterfly. These cells actually feed on the ooze that was a caterpillar. I thought that sounded sort of gross and sad, but the woman who shared this with me loved the idea. I do too. The imaginal cells hold all possibilities, she exclaimed. The imaginal cells. Even knowing of the wonderful possibilities, I'm sure the caterpillar caterpillar would be terrified to become gelatinous mush. Now that is extreme. After weight loss, after change, after whatever we're changing, right? Whatever we choose to change. Some of us reach a point at which the only way out, the only way to fly is by allowing our old life to pass away and to completely transform We must create a cocoon for ourselves, a place where we are nurtured and protected from harm while we turn to mush and then grow, grow, grow. Unlike the caterpillar, we know what we're in for when we make the choice to transform. We have to find the courage to create a safe space for ourselves and then allow it. The reward for this brave effort is we get to fly like we've always dreamed we would. Isn't that kind of cool? So I think about it's very cool. this, this is what it said to me. One, it made me think of our support group and how important it is to surround ourselves with people who are our safe space when we turn into gelatinous mush. Mm-hmm. And why, 
when we're transforming, it's so hard for the people around us. They don't understand, you know, what's happening. It's because we're letting go of the person we were. Because the only way to move forward is to let go of that. And the and unfortunately, the people who love us, our families, our friends, they love us for how we are. They don't like the idea yes. of letting it go, of letting mm-hmm. us change. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, you know, fortunate or fortunate, depending on how you look at it, I think we were born to be who we were born to be. And whatever we were that were, was making us unhappy, and which is the reason why we chose to change, the reason why we chose to transform, you know, that's just a part of the process. You know, to become gelatinous mush. <laughs> Uh, it sounded kind of gross, try, but you know what I loved and what greenlit my days where it talked about how the imaginal cells were is where all I love that word. Lay. I think about I it, imaginal it. cells. That's what I'm thinking. That's how it is. We, we we have our brain and we our imagination and we imagined wherever we were, we imagined this new life for ourselves. And it's in the imagination that gets us through the transformation, right? But I think sometimes we get so scared. We get so scared right. either in the process because it's pain. Can you imagine what it must feel like to become a match, you know, mush, gelatinous mush? I'm thinking, I kind of know. I think that's Sometimes. what we went through. I oh, think I change. Yeah, no, no. I don't even know what to say. Um, I think it's a shame that, because I know this is about weight loss surgery in that kind of window of time where we're ch- really having major transformation go on. Mm-hmm. But isn't it a shame that we're not more aware and allow ourselves the same kind of season in all the stages of human life, especially female human life in particular? I can relate to the th- You know, there are many stages that we go through to grow and to own who we are, to feel strong about who we are, to not feel less about ourselves or like failures or that we didn't measure up to the tiny things around us in the world, regardless of what age we were as young women or adolescents or all the places where we started to think we didn't measure up. If we had known, I mean, if there was just some, it doesn't seem to be that there's like a real honoring um, rite of passage for a lot of the stages of life where we can get really jacked up. I know. Because we didn't well, I think of it that way going into, I think, you know, and coming out. It can happen in all of our lives, right? It doesn't have to be weight loss. It doesn't even have to be woman. No. It just be, it's just about dreaming a bigger dream for yourself and saying, you know, this is not the life for me. This is not the life for me. And I, I need change. And what we, the process we have to go right. through to be, to be the change. And sometimes we get too scared it's and true. we don't do it. I think about the years that, you know, I, when I was first sent to have weight loss surgery, when I was 36, I was like, I got scared. I didn't do it. I waited till I was 40. I wasn't ready. I was afraid. And I think of some of the changes that happened in my life now that where sometimes I feel like fear scares me. And even though I know, I see, I see where I'm coming, you know, where I'm going, where I'm going to be flying. Right. Right. There's a part of me that thinks, oh my God, I got to go through that mush phase, the suck zone (laughs) to get to where yeah, I and be yeah the there are some line. suck zones. Uh, the thing is, even after you come out of the cocoon and you are, your wings are drying. There's a lot of the the muck zone is more is less about you and more about just the experience of others trying to allow you to let your wings dry and and to be still a little bit and to grow into the new you. And the thing is that the imagining the imagining cells or whatever that is that's. We cannot even begin to wonder. We can say we can see what a butterfly looks like on the other side, but it's really more about the transitions really are more internal than they are physical. The physical can happen mechanically, but the internal stuff is re- re- gets very precarious, and we really need to have time to grow inside and explore and, and release and affirm and and it's doubly hard because those who loved us when do not want to lose the person that we were to them. And we will not be the same people in one way or another. And we have to bring people along once we're kind of sure of our footing. And it's a very, it's a very, you will not be the same. I know. Not that's, be the same. And this is how I feel like 
this whole thing is going to green light my day because it's easy to get into the sadness of it because it you, mm-hmm. know, you get sad about the mush, <laughs> you know, about becoming mush. But what green lights my day is thinking that even though it feels kind of weird to think about the imaginal cells feeding off of the mush, you know, because you think like, oh, that's kind of gross. And also it's kind of cold, you know, because so, I, I almost wonder if it's like that part where you have to be a little bit selfish to give yourself permission to be a little bit selfish and say, this is my life and I'm not happy. You know, because it, it takes something to say. I mean, there's people who are always saying, I'm not happy. But to say, I'm not happy, and I'm going to do what I need to to change that. You know, I'm not going to sit in the unhappiness. I'm going to I'm going to change that because life is too short, you know, to, to, to live like this, you know. And I'm, and I'm the one who has right. the power. I don't have to sit here and feel bad because somebody's making me feel bad. Or I, in my mind, I think they're making me feel bad. This is my life and I'm going to take charge. And, you know, even if it's uncomfortable, you know, going through the change, I know what I have to do to be happy and I'm just going to do it, you know, and allow for transformation to happen and let my imagination feed, feed on the mush, you know, mm-hmm. on the sex zone. So that's how I'm going to green light my day today. Well, how, do you, how, how Does it green light your day at all, Sally? Yeah, it does. It does. Because it, 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 it makes me realize that those stages and those things we have to grow through um, are our rite of passage. And we need, we cannot get to be unless we go through whatever it is we have to go through. And so we might as well make the most of releasing ourselves to the go through part and to cooperate with the process and to, to know that it's going to happen, we can only see on this level, but these changes are going to happen on many, many levels deep inside that we don't even begin to imagine because we can't go there because we don't even have a clue. Eventually, you're more open if they can all, you know, knit together and, and work themselves through. Yeah, it green lights my day. Yeah, I like It gives me more permission to feel like it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And just know that when we're not when we're not feeling it, it's because our imaginal cells are feeding on the mush. <laughs> but good things are coming. Good things are coming. We'll be flying. We'll be the butterfly at the end of the day. Exactly. Okay. So we hope that all of you have a great Friday and a great weekend, people. Make it green. Make it very green. Make Talk it green. You. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.